Hi guys, I'm back again. This time with a, a really cool video, which I'm sure many of you will enjoy. Uh, currently 13 Celsius under the ice cream bean tree, which is um, pretty cold. But I waited for the the sun to came out to come out, which it just did. It's again 12 noon. 12 noon seems to be the best time to get out here and get things done. It was cloudy and uh, very, very cold all morning, like uh, seven, eight, nine Celsius. So we're gonna get some work done now that the temperature is uh, above 10 and also the sun's out. I just saw the first flower from the plum tree today. So very exciting. When you see a plum um, tree flower, it's a good sign that um, spring is knocking, knocking on the door, knock, knock. I also noticed new growth on the uh, starfruit tree. This is the Thai night variety. And that is super exciting because I've never seen new growth on the starfruit tree in the middle to late winter. That's a first. Usually this doesn't happen till um, late spring, like November. So that's really cool, guys. New growth on the starfruit tree in, um, in winter. How awesome. I don't see much else. That's the only one I could, I could um, find. There might be other uh, new shoots coming, but um, I haven't examined close up. So anyway, good news. And you can even see on the tips, there's, uh, there's new growth. If you get really close, right like that right there if we can focus yeah so awesome let's take a look at the greenhouse and see what the temperature is in there before I get started it'll give me a pep up when I see the, the higher temperature okay wow as soon as I stuck my face in here it's like wow I'm in um, the tropics come on focus come on dude there we are 19 19 Celsius thank you very much let's get to work so what are we doing today well it's what I said I'd be doing few days ago today I'm uh, finally moving these uh, four guavas into bigger pots and I'm gonna have them in the front not in the back I'm trying to free up space in the, in the, in the back it's getting out of hand guys and I want uh, the front to fill up let's have a look I can get an overview yeah I want this front food forest to fill up fill up fill up fill up so that's uh, one guava there this is the second one we'll go through the varieties when I'm done so I've got those black pots I showed you the other day wash them down the like new that's the uh, third guava and over here, the fourth one. So that's today's task. To keep our sanity, guys. Remember that um, our city is in um, stage four of COVID-19 lockdown. So things are getting pretty serious here. Okay, I got some soil yesterday too from Bunnings, delivered to the house. And we're gonna use some of this as well. It's a combination of premium, everything's premium. Premium, premium potting mix and um, premium um, compost. So let's get some of these bags out and bring them out to the front. 
So even though they look like a lot of soil, over half of it's gone, guys. Okay. We have the soil out all the way down. And now you're gonna be asking, why am I doing this? Why don't I just put them in the ground? Good question. And I asked myself that many times. And uh, well guys, there's a couple of reasons why I didn't put them in the ground. There is room here, as I told you about a month ago. The original plan was to put them in the ground right there where the pot is, where the pots are, all right? There is, there is ground, it, there is room, but it would be very tight. But the, the tightness is not the reason why I changed my mind. The reason is, well, um, well, there's two reasons. One, in these new pots, they'll be fine for at least two years of growth, maybe three, right? Because we're talking double the size. Don't ask me what size these are, because I didn't measure them, right? I'm guessing, let's have a look. Does it even say? Yeah, I'm sure it says it somewhere. Oh, there you go. Right there. What does it say? 510 millimeters. So 51 centimeters. Okay. Um, so about double what these original ones are. So one reason was that they'll be good here for at least two years, if not three. Okay, and by then they'll be around five foot, maybe six foot tall. Well, this purple one will definitely be over six foot. This guy's a quick grower. He's unlike the other three. It's a different kind of guava. And uh, the second reason why I didn't put him in the ground is because um, I'm not in good shape. I'm not in good shape, guys. Yeah, I've got a sore back. I've had a bad back now for about a year and a half. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if I can dig these holes myself. I can probably do one a week. I can get it done, right, if I wanted to, over two or three weeks, a little, a little each week, because they're pretty small. But small or not, you still need to dig a big hole, a hole at least the size of that pot, minimum, minimum that size hole in the ground a minimum okay so um that's the second reason why i'm leaving them in pots hopefully my back will recover in the next year or two and then i can just uh, put them in the ground and see what uh, progress we have from the actual trees at that time so there you go so let's get um transplanting now pot to pot even bringing out these two pots last week from the back to the frontier was uh, um, a colossal effort these are um, I think these are six or seven hundred millimeter pots these are even bigger Right, and then you got those ones over there where the bananas are, and I think they're 800 millimeters. So yeah, uh, I brought these out, these two figs with a trolley, with a trolley. Uh, like I said once before, these weigh like not so much these, but the bananas they weigh at least 100 to 150 kilos. I had to roll these around on their side couldn't lift it see the the marks i made on the ground i rolled them from all the way down there where they were to over here a couple of weeks ago very hard effort and the reason i brought out these figs to the front in pots is because where they were at the back i'm going to be planting the jackfruit in spring and these guys would have been in the way. So that's one reason I moved them to the front here. And the other reason is 
I think they'll get more sun, a lot more sun here. And uh, figs, as you know, have to have a lot of sun. And uh, I've started now. I want to also say that guavas are very forgiving. They're not uh, sensitive. They're not cold sensitive. And they're not soil sensitive. And they're not wind sensitive. And they're not sensitive at all. Except, of course, to temperatures below minus 2. Or um, below 28 Fahrenheit. So, I wish all the tropical trees were as forgiving as the guava oh my gosh what a what a what a nightmare with the uh, mangoes and uh, a lot of the other super sensitives these guys are so much on um, the friendly side so you shouldn't be having any problems with guava guys you shouldn't be having any problems um, the only problem you would be having is um, rotten soil like no 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 life in the soil no life at all um and the other one might be if it's sitting in water right Com common sense no food sitting in a puddle right then you would have problems with any tree i've never had any problems with guava and uh, if you use a good potting mix like the one i'm just used now right it's got built-in um, well trace elements growth stimulants I don't even know what these are I don't have to know right four months of food so this will carry me through from August September October November it'll take me to summer to the beginning of summer I won't have to do anything till December right to this um, soil to, to these guys how's that for um, super super easy super easy but I think I got too much soil. I only needed one bag for each pot. Oh well. Soil is always um, required. So it's good to have it in um, stockpile. This is what the soil looks like for you purists out there. Right? Very, very, very rich. Very rich very very rich I mean broken down to the smallest point and all the food is in there the only thing that's missing are worms all right that's the only thing missing here worms okay that's one bag just one bag over there and we're gonna stick this guy in now The other point is, how do I put this into here um, without causing any problems? Well, the way I've been doing it for 20 years is I just clear as much of the soil as I can, right? Until it gets compacted, and until it's, it's compacted and doesn't come off anymore. When it stops coming off, then it's ready to turn upside down. See the, the first signs of roots at the top? These little hairs, these are roots, right? That's when you stop um doing this so then i grab all this topsoil here i throw it in here mix it in and then i turn this pot upside down carefully carefully okay i've got all the loose soil off from the top of the tree see the roots that have come out gentle be very gentle is very gentle very gentle very gentle you don't want to break any roots so I put the soil, topsoil right here. See, it's got a different shade of black. And then you mix this all in. You mix it all in. Mix it all in. Right. And then the operation of turning this upside down. It's easier with two people, uh, with big pots. But these are these are tiny. These are really small pots, guys. Should be able to do it yourself, as long as you uh, follow my instruction. Otherwise, you get all this topsoil that you saw. It's going to fall on the ground here. It's going to be a mess. It's going to fall on the ground. It's going to fall down your sleeves. It's going to fall on your face. It's going to fall all over you. So instead of that, you scoop it out the way I showed you, and you put it in here. 
and then you turn this upside down. Look, it's compacted because it's been raining for the last four months, right? In winter, it rains almost every day. So there's no way this is going to be dry soil. It's going to be very wet and uh, compacted, like, um, like um, dough, bread dough. All right, let's, do, let's turn it upside down. Okay, done. So even though I was super careful, look at the mess. See this? Super careful. And I got it out in one swoop without um, breaking the soil at all or the roots on the sides. It's a technique, guys. You master it after doing this 20, 30 times, right? No root damage and no soil breakup at all. Zero. Perfection. I told you, it's like, like hard um, bread dough, but moist all the way through. Moist, but not falling apart. And now we're going to fill in on the outside with another bag. So I, do, I did need a second bag. Now, because this is not a super sensitive tropical tree, you can be a little, um, uh, what's the word, a little slack with it, forgiving, the word I used earlier. That means super sensitive trees, you have to keep the soil level below um, this point here on the trunk. Right, you can't bring it. You can't bring the soil up to here. You can't do that with these super sensitive mangoes and all, all the um, cold sensitive, very uh, fussy tropical trees. You can't. You can't muck around like that. But um, with apples and pears and cherries and plums and guavas, right? You can do whatever you want. You can put the soil there, 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 there. It doesn't matter, guys. Trust me. I've beaten these guys around and kicked them, and they they they're survivors. I wish, I, like I said, all the tropicals were like that, but alas, it doesn't work like that. So now, um, just fill in the, the sides, all right, just fill it in, and I'll, I'll be back when it's done. Oh, that sun feels good. So you can see now the, the fine roots. I've come to that point and where the um, the big roots are starting here look see that so you want to cover these just a little bit just a little bit that's pretty much a, a perfect job so I'm just gonna put a little bit more soil to cover these fine root hairs and then we're done well then we're gonna water everything in oh and there's also the stick that was there right you push that further in that went through the roots now the bottom it's all right now touching the bottom of the pot um, yeah so it's got some support against the wind and we're done guys And there you have it. Just water it, water it in well. We're going to get a lot of rain here tomorrow. So that'll be a supplementary watering tomorrow. So I'll give it a good soak until the, the water comes out from below. Then you know it's um, done. Once the water starts coming out from the bottom. Okay, I'm done guys. Hope you enjoyed that video. One last thing, make sure there is enough holes at the bottom of the, um, of the um, pot for good drainage, okay? At least 10 holes or five little ones. This time next year, we should have um, some fruit on those for guava. Okay guys, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. 
and we'll see you from the next video.